is the best flip phone of 2023. Meet the new Motorola Razr Plus. It's sleek, it's stylish, it's pocketable. And even when it's closed like this, you can use all your apps. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker. And over the last decade, I've made it my job to show people around the world that tech can be easy, fun, and exciting. On this channel, I give you special access to the products I review, the events I attend, and all the exciting people I get to meet along the way. So if flip phones are your jam, give this channel a like and subscribe, and I'll help you find the right gadget to match your needs. I spent almost a month with the new Motorola Razr Plus, and this is my review. If there was one phone that I've been most excited to review this year, it's been the new Motorola Razr Plus. Truth be told, I already own an iPhone. So in the search for the perfect second phone, I gravitated towards the novelty and pocketability of Android foldables. Flip phones in particular have been of most interest to me, but I will say the options thus far had been disappointing. When it comes to software experience, the best currently out there is the Galaxy Z Flip 4 from Samsung, but its cover display is lacking. You really can't do anything on it, sans viewing your notifications. Oppo does an excellent job with the cameras, as well as its large cover display on the Find N2 Flip, but beyond displaying widgets, there's hardly anything you can do on this screen either. Which explains my excitement over the most Motorola Razr Plus. The entire cover screen is all display, and you can use all your apps on it. So let's go straight there. While flip phones are definitely about their inner screen that magically folds in half, Motorola spares no expense on the external display of the Razer Plus. At 3.6 inches, it's the largest on a flip phone to date. It's a P OLED, and it's got a super fast 144 hertz refresh rate. Definitely not an afterthought. When not in use, the lock screen displays a clock face of your choice. There are many to choose from, but this colorful watercolor one is my fave. When the phone is unlocked, the home screen looks like this. And there are tons of customizable wallpapers to reflect your personality. There's a row of shortcuts, and down here, buttons to bring up your notifications and see how much battery you've got left. From the home screen, you can swipe left or right to access panels, which are basically widgets, like the weather, controls for your Spotify music, or your calendar. The most important button, though, on the external display is this one, which brings up the app drawer. What you're seeing right now is what I've chosen to display, but by tapping here, I can enable any app I've got installed. Sure, on a small screen like this, apps like Calculator work perfectly, but a lot of apps work great on it, too. But before I show you my favorite apps, here's a quick word from this video's sponsor, Vernal. If you need a proper desk for a home office, Vernal says this is the last standing desk you will ever need. It's sturdy, stable, and easy to assemble. Unlike other standing desks we've seen that only have a veneer coating, this desktop is made of bamboo, so not only is it going to last a long time, each one has a natural grain, meaning no desktop is the same. I think this color wig with the white frame is stunning. And I love those smooth, rounded corners. Part of the frame is integrated onto the desk, making assembly quick and easy. You just slide the legs like so, screw to lock them in place, and voila, done in six minutes. These legs have columns that slide seamlessly into each other, so the desk stays stable when you adjust its height. Spilling coffee because of a wobbly desk is the last thing anyone wants in the morning. Or cocktail if you're working through the night. See how the espresso martini in the glass barely moves? And it stays this stable no matter how much stuff you have on the desk as you adjust its height. Speaking of, the desk can go up to almost 50 inches at its highest, and if there's something in the way, it's got anti-collision rebound, so it moves back a small distance in the other direction, then stops. 
The Vernal Standing Desk comes in two bigger sizes, 48 inches and 60 inches. But because we live in New York, we got the smallest one, 40 by 30. It's perfect for small apartments. If you're looking to buy a great desk for your home office, you can get the Vernal Standing Desk today at $100 off. And if you use our code, you get 6% off your order. Don't worry, I'll put all the links down below. Here are some of my favorites. Of course, YouTube. Gadget Match videos look great. In fact, any video streaming app is going to work just fine. I personally have used it discreetly to catch up on Mandalorian episodes while on the subway. If I'm lost, I need to keep track of step-by-step -step directions on Google Maps, but don't necessarily want to have my phone open, this is perfect for it too. And if maybe I've given up and just want to take a car, I can easily order a lift without having to open up my phone. I've also enjoyed gaming. And while I'm happy to report that I've tried that games like PUBG or even Forza Horizon on Xbox Game Pass with a paired controller, the outer screen is best for more casual games. Try Angry Birds. This game fits the display flawlessly. Or check some of the mini games that come pre-installed. Titles like Marble Mayhem and Astro Odyssey are from Motorola. But the game my fellow tech creators and I have been obsessed with is called Stack Bounce, which is actually part of Google's Game Snacks service. We actually have an ongoing competition, and here's the leaderboard. Tim Schofield leads with 255,000. Mr. Mobile is at 183,000, and I am at a distant third at 103,000. But where I really think the cover display does best is messaging. Being able to read new messages on Telegram or at replies on Twitter, perusing my Gmail inbox and swiping to archive junk mail. And if you have to reply to those messages or emails, you can pull up a full-sized keyboard. There's only space to see the line you're currently typing, but for quick replies, it does the job. And it's much better than not having the option to reply at all without having to open your phone. Lastly, and this is not necessarily new if you're familiar with flip phones, the outer display lets you do things you cannot do on a regular smartphone. Taking selfies is one example. Instead of using the always inferior selfie camera, because you have this external display, you can easily take photos using the main camera. And because you can adjust the angle of the phone, you can also prop it up like it had its own built-in tripod. This is perfect when you're out with friends. Speaking of friends, there's a fun app called Photo Booth that takes four <laughs> photos in sequence, perfect for group photos. But also, it's great for taking these OOTDs, especially when you don't have anyone to help. And if you do have someone to help you out, you can also turn on preview mode so you get a live preview of what the photographer sees. And just to drive home the point, this is why I think the Razer Plus does it better. Here it is side by side with the Galaxy Z Flip 4. See how small the preview is on Samsung's flip phone. That side-by-side -side shot is the perfect segue to our chapter on cameras. The Motorola Razr Plus has two main cameras, a 12 megapixel wide camera and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. Compared to the cameras on a top of the line iOS or Android smartphone, flip phones don't usually take the best photos. So I figured I'd do a quick comparison versus the other popular flip phone. And here's what I shot. Which phone do you think did it better? Personally, I think it could have gone other way depending on your preference. Right, so we're many minutes into this review and I still haven't opened up the phone. 
that that's intentional. When opened up, the Razer Plus is just like any Android smartphone, so I figured I'd focus on what really sets it apart from the others. That said, let's keep it closed for a second and talk about design. One of the reasons why I love my Razer Plus is because of how pretty it is. I love taking it out on the subway and I've been getting a lot of glances, especially this Viva Magenta color. It's both a nod to that pink Motorola Razer V3 from back in the day, and I know it's the Pantone color of the year, but in person, it's really more red than magenta. Still, I have no complaints. It's flashy in all the right ways. Only on this color will you get the faux leather back. The black and blue options are a matte glass instead. I personally love the faux leather model. It has a great non-slip, non-smudge finish, and I feel more confident using it without a case. All right, now it's time to open it up. There's a crease. It's noticeable, but nothing as pronounced as the gutter-like trow on the Flip 4. While most high-end phones have 120 hertz displays, this panel can go up to 165 hertz. Not like I've ever felt the need for it or even noticed it while using the phone. The phone feels great in the hands. It can fit even in my smallest bag. Can you tell that I'm hyped? Last thing worth mentioning is durability. There is Corning Gorilla Glass Victus up front and an IP52 rating, which means it is water repellent, not to be confused with water resistant. So please do not submerge this phone in water. The Motorola Razr Plus is packed with a 3,800 milliamp hour battery, and in the time that I've used it, it lasted me a full day of use. This could be anecdotal, but potentially it could also be because I've been using the outer display more. The phone supports 30 watt turbo power, but does not ship with a charger in the box. But in my tests with a Motorola branded 30 watt turbo powered charger, I got up to 45% in 30 minutes. The phone also supports 5 watt wireless charging. Motorola sells its own wireless charger, but any 30 watt power delivery adapter or a Qi wireless charger will work. So is the Motorola Razr Plus your gadget match? At just under $1,000, this phone is the same price as Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4, which is a fair price to pay for a foldable. I definitely consider the Motorola Razr Plus. It comes with the gadget match seal of approval. And pending how I feel about the Google Pixel Fold, this might be the Android phone that I keep for the rest of the year. Then again, it's also worth pointing out that Samsung is about to announce the new Galaxy Z Flip 5 at the end of July, so you might also want to wait for that announcement before you decide to purchase. And that was our Motorola Razr Plus review. If you like to see more videos like this one, you know the drill folks, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we publish. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff and for news and updates, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.